All right, for this lab activity today, we're gonna to be trying to analyze the formula of a hydrate by evaporating the water that's trapped within that crystal lattice of the hydrate. And that water is going to leave the compound, leaving us with an anhydrate. By measuring the mass difference, we should be able to determine the molar ratio of water molecules to the anhydrous compound. The first thing that we want to do anytime that we're doing gravimetric analysis with heating is we always want to weigh our empty dish because this compound will stick to the dish and it's going to be really hard to scrape it back out after it's been heated. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to weigh my dish. The mass that's reading on my scale is 44.95 grams. Now I'm not going to zero my scale. Um, because what I want to do is find the combined mass of both the hydrates and the weighing dish together. So I'm going to add approximately three to five grams of my hydrate to this dish, record the combined mass of both, and then from there we'll use the total change in mass between the beginning and end of heating to determine how much water was driven off. So in this dish, I have about three grams. We're gonna add this to the, the weigh boat, or to the weigh, the uh, evaporating dish itself. The mass that I see on the scale is 48.60, so that's gonna be our starting mass for the evaporating dish and the hydrate. You can see this is a standard setup, just like with our magnesium lab. We have a ring stand, a clay triangle, and I have my Bunsen burner ready to go. I'm going to light that. I'm going to adjust the flame just so that the flame is touching the bottom of the dish and so that the flame isn't shooting up around the sides of the dish. Okay, so you can see now that the water is actually starting to bubble out of the hydrate. You can see the, uh, the bubble starting to form on the edges of the compound itself. The, uh, the intensity of the flame, we don't really need to get that tight inner cone for this lab as long as there's enough heat to drive out and evaporate the water, we should be good. You'll start to see the edges of the hydrate starting to change color. The center of that pile has more of a translucent um, hue to it. The edges, you can see, are starting to become a little bit more opaque, and that's a sign of dehydration occurring inside the crystal structure of the hydrate. At this point, we've finished our heating. The sample at this point has a very opaque texture to it. You can see that most of that clear, translucent um, color has disappeared. And what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer our sample to the scale very carefully to reweigh it to see how much mass we lost. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check to make sure that my ring stand and my dish is not still radiating heat. You can do that by simply putting your hand close to the dish within a few inches, it still is fairly warm, but it's cool enough for me to use the beaker tongs to be able to transfer it to the scale. Now you can use the beaker tongs with one hand. There's actually an indentation in the beaker tongs to kind of fit the curvature of the dish. But if you feel apprehensive about that, you can actually use two hands, one on each side of the tongs, and very carefully position it so that it's um, cradling the dish, and then moving it very slowly over to the scale. My scale is now reading a mass that is lower than what I originally started with. Your goal is going to be to be able to use the mass of water that you lost to find the molar ratio of water to the anhydrous compound. 